Yo, what's up guys, Tectonic here, and today I am bringing you another Euro Truck Simulator 2 video. Uh, oh! Um, yeah, we're off to a great start. <laughs> um... It would help if I remembered the keys. Uh, <laughs> right, so let's just carry on and forget that I never uh, that ever even happened. But before we go, let me make sure all my stuff is up. There we go. So we are on our way to go and pick up a trailer from Paris. But we're already in Paris. We're on the outskirts of Paris. In fact, let me just show you what is going on right now. Okay, right. Basically, if you watch my last Tectonic video, the London Underground one, you'll know that I filmed a video from Calais to Paris and then it turned out I didn't even record. That's why I'm in Paris when the last Eurotrip video I was in Calais. So that's what's going on there. Uh, and this is just obviously outside Paris. We're just going we're just going into sort of like the I guess the main bit of Paris, yeah, that looks pretty big. Main I don't know. Anyway, there you go. So we're going over to there. And then we're going to go over to Melts or something. There it is. M Mel Mez. Metz. I don't know. Let me know how you say that. Uh, so, yeah. That's basically what we're doing. That's all we're going to do. Right. Let's just uh, get going. Is the sound even on? I can barely hear it. Uh, right. I assume this is straight over. I don't have to look, do I? Good, good. Didn't get hit by anything. Right, oh, what's the speed limit? 50, we're good, we're good. Right, do we need any fuel? No, sleep is good. Because last time as well, uh, again, it was obviously, I didn't, didn't get recorded, but last time that even didn't work out too well because the, the delivery was late because I didn't realise I had to sleep. So, yeah, things didn't do, uh, do too well or go too well in the last video, but... That's okay, we, we'll go rectify it now. But the good news is, is that you never saw that, at least, so... I'm just going to overtake you there, if that's alright, sir. Oh, no, you don't. We... What the hell? That was Amber! Is that a joke? That was so Amber. Oh, my God. That is a joke right there. I mean, that guy stopped. We saw that guy stop, but Jesus, that was so Amber. Oh well, let's just carry on. Oh, we're going to three lanes here. A up. Three lanes. Not that that means anything. Oh, and one thing that I did mention in the last one that didn't get recorded that I've just seen now is what are these, like, broken lines along the side of the motorway? Like, I know what the actual lane is. It's a hard shoulder on the right here. But what? why are the lines broken? I don't understand. So if you know, or like, if you're from France... And it's actually like that. Let me know if it's not like that in France. Then, like, why have they put that in the game? So, I I was just asking that last time. Wondering. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realise. It's actually 50 minutes to get to this place. It's quite far. But at least we are on the, on the motorway. That guy's going more than 56 miles an hour. As if this road is only a 56 mile per hour limit. That's a joke. 56 miles an hour on this thing. I mean, the country roads in the UK are 60 miles an hour. Let alone motorways, which are 70. And there's even talk, I remember, once of uh, bringing them up to 80 miles an hour. I remember that being on the news a few years ago. Um, whether they should increase the speed limit to 80. But I think it was eventually decided that they wouldn't because it would just cause more crashes and fatalities. Which to me is quite a good decision. I mean, what is 10 miles an hour, really? Well, not 10. Like, I mean, 10. Get Yeah, getting 10 miles an hour. That's. I'd rather just <laughs> go a little bit slower and keep my life, if that's alright. I mean, I'm not saying that I go slow. Because. I don't. I hate slow people when I'm driving, but I just stick to the speed limit, basically, pretty much. 
I mean, right now I have to, to be honest, because I've got a black box in my car, which if you don't know what it is, it's basically like this telematics box where if you're a new driver, if you get one fitted into your car, you can literally save like hundreds of pounds on your car insurance. Um, so, yeah, we've got one of those basically in my car, which means that you have to like stick to the speed limit and you have to... Um, oh, you're slowing down, mate. I can't even afford to look left there. <laughs> Oh, is this a roundabout? Okay. That's an interesting roundabout. Um, yeah, but, yeah. You just have to skip to speed limits. You have to make sure you go slow around corners. It don't accelerate too fast. That sort of thing. It just measures your driving. That's all it does. Um, so I've got one of those, so I sort of have to skip to the speed limit right now anyway. But even if I didn't have one of those, I still wouldn't, like, be ridiculous, you know? Like, yeah... You go above occasionally. It's in here. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you still go above occasionally. Everyone does it almost, you know. But the thing about the black box that's so annoying, it's not the fact that I'm saying, oh, I can't go at, you know, 80 miles an hour. It's the fact that I'm like, oh, no, I've just gone to, like, 74 by accident or whatever. Um, that's all it is, really. It's not, you know, the fact that I'm annoyed that I can't speed. It's the fact that I worry too much about accidentally speeding you know because like if you're just driving along say 30 and then you accidentally sort of just don't look down for a, a few seconds and you're suddenly at 35 because you were going downhill or something you know then it just gets annoying basically it's just like oh my gosh i've got to quickly slow down because otherwise they will penalize you although uh, I did just get my driving report back for the last month because this is actually a plug-in black box which is amazing because it means that I don't have to have it okay I think I need to take a little bit of a wider swing on that so I'm just going to go over here Jesus Christ we good? <laughs> Jesus uh, yeah so Mine's a plug-in black box, which a lot of my friends are very jealous of because they're quite rare. Um, because you literally you'd be an idiot if you didn't get a black box. Because for my insurance, you can save like something like six hundred pounds for the first year, and then like another four hundred pounds for the year after that. So it's literally insane how much you can save. You know, definitely over a thousand pounds, I'd say, like on average. Uh, for the first couple of years of your insurance so it's definitely something worth getting and like I say my friends are pretty jealous of it because I know a couple friends who have uh, just learned to drive and they've got a car and everything and they've got a black box but theirs is in for a year so <laughs> that I mean that's like the Skanger it's not a plug-in Skanger isn't having a plug-in it's like properly connected in like through the back of your glove box and um yeah so <laughs> people usually have it for a year oh geez i have only got it for three months because mine just plugs into like the uh the 12 volt socket in the front so yeah it'd be annoying if it accidentally got pulled out though because <laughs> you're meant to have it in 95 percent of the time uh but i don't think mine ever has been I, I did notice it once, though, to be fair, I did, but I'm pretty sure it was only out for, like, five seconds where the light was off, and I was like, oh, shoot. That's not good. But, yeah. It's good now. It's all plugged in. Two months left. But, um, yeah, like I said, I did get my first driving report back. And, because uh, they make they make to send out emails. Admiral is the company that I, I'm with for my insurance. It's a UK company, I think. I don't think it's anywhere else. Um... And yeah, so they, they're the ones that provide the insurance and the black box and everything. And they're meant to give you emails, like weekly emails or something like that. Maybe monthly, I can't remember. Um, but apparently there was an error and loads of people weren't getting them. So uh, my mum phoned up because she's the insurance holder. Um, so she phoned up and... Uh, oh, jeez. And they basically just gave a verbal feedback and they spoke to me. They um, It's a bit weird because like, she phoned up because she's the insurance holder. Like, she's the one paying for it. It's under her name. But because the car is under my name, like, they're not allowed to tell her. So I was literally just like, oh, yeah, just, I don't care. You, you're you allowed to know. Because they, they need your, oh, I don't think I'm meant to come off here. Because they, like, need your permission if you want 
to tell anyone else. I'm literally like, <laughs> she's the, she's the insurance holder. She's the policy holder. Uh, you know, just <laughs> tell her. And they're like, no, we need your permission. So yeah, I just spoke to them for like ten minutes, and they let me know. And my bright driving, they do it on like a gold, silver, bronze sort of scale. And my dr my overall is a bronze, which I was quite surprised at because I've always been making sure like I'm driving really carefully. Um, and it turns out it was a bronze overall. But then it turned out that that was only because, for two reasons. One, because apparently my car had been parked overnight somewhere, away from the registered address, like my home. It had been parked away from there for a night, which I could not recall at all. Um, and even though we told them that, still, that was how it is. They're just going to keep it like that, that my car was away. And it was apparently on the 2nd of July or something. And... I looked back on my Google tracking, because if you've got Google Maps on your phone, it literally tracks wherever you go, uh, and then you can review your timeline. So I looked back on my timeline, and 2nd of uh, July, it was a Sunday, I literally just went to work and back, walked the dog to the park nearby and back. That was it. <laughs> there was literally nothing else. So I don't know where they've got that from, but there you go. Apparently it's just stuck like that now. Right, we're gonna go. I don't really want to stop, so we're gonna go in this one here. Where they just keep the barriers up. Oh, Scar to Toll Road. Road. Alright, I do quite like the toll roads in France. It makes it a little bit more for an interesting journey. I'm just gonna come into this one here. Um. Yeah, but yeah, that was the first reason that it got parked overnight somewhere, which just didn't happen. And then the other reason, which to be fair did happen, was that I've been driving the car past 10pm quite a lot. Now, there's no specific curfew on my policy, so it does let me drive past 10. Because some, some policies will be really strict and just say, alright, you, your curfew is 11 o'clock. If you go out past 11, you know, more than a couple times, then that's it. That's the end of your insurance. So mine will let me go out, potentially, as much as I like, technically, but it's actually not going to be like that. Um, so yeah, because I've been like picking people up um, past 10, like my mum's always asked for lifts from town past 10, or my sister um, into town or into a nearby city. Um, that's basically what's done that, basically. That's... Um, I've just been picking people up and stuff past 10. Which, to be fair, is the least I can do for my mum. You know, she has paid for my car <laughs> and my insurance. So, I don't think a few lifts is really going to hurt anyone. So, I don't mind doing those. And for my sister, well, she just pays me to do it, so <laughs> that's fine. 10 quid uh, to take her to a nearby city. Not bad, if I'm honest with you. It is a little profit in there once you minus the petrol costs. Uh, so, yeah, that is... Oh jeez, that is the situation of the car insurance, basically. A nice story there. Um, so hopefully, yeah, because they said my driving was good. I mean, they can't give you like a gold, bronze, silver. Another toll, is that a joke? Uh, they can't give you a, like a bronze, gold, silver. Oh, move, 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 move. Oh, that was close. Jesus Christ. That was close. I mean, <laughs> God. We're good, though. We're good. Uh, I'll let this guy in. In you go, mate. Oh, it's gone to a two-lane road. All of a sudden. Is that the end of the toll or something? Uh, yeah, so they can't give you a bronze, gold, silver on, like, individual parts. Like my driving. My driving's, like, a separate section. Um... So, but he just said, your driving's good, you don't need to worry about that, it's just these other two things that has what, that is like lowered your overall grade down to a bronze. So like basically what he's saying is like, if I didn't go out after 10, and if I didn't stay away that one night, then I would have got a gold, basically. So that's quite annoying, but to rectify the situation, I'm not going to be going out past 10 anymore, which is really annoying but <laughs> I mean it's been a few days now since he told me that since he told me gave me my update so oh 
Uh, every time I go to change to cruise control, I swerve out. I'm not looking. Um, this is actually quite a long trip. I just realised two hours forty minutes, and we've already been going for quite some time. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So he told me what happened there. Our loan instalments. That's fine. Two thousand eight hundred eighty-eight was paid. Are we slowing down? Oh, are we slowing down? It's a forty-three zone. Great. Um. Oh, I need to come out, mate. Sorry, but this guy's going too slow. Even though I'm going at forty-one and the speed limit's forty-three. Don't you just hate that when two when a lorry's trying to overtake another lorry, <laughs> like on a motorway or a dual carriageway? It's literally like, oh my god, move out my way. Especially on dual carriageway because it's only two lanes. I literally hate it. I think in the UK, lorries should just be like banged to the um to the inside lane. Like, I don't think they should be allowed to come out because it just literally slows everyone down. Oh, I can speak up now. Um, yeah, so they, he told me that a few days ago and for the last few days I've literally just been making sure I was back in by 10, which sounds weird, like why are you out at 10 o'clock, <laughs> you know, like three nights in a row. It's just because I literally just love driving so much. Like, I guess, I don't know if like older people can remember that or if that was even a thing back then but like for me and my friends every single person who's passed their test like that I know so far just literally like going out and driving all the time like whenever they can and that is literally what I do I literally just like phone up my friends and like well not phone up because you know who actually calls each other anymore um I literally just send a message to my friends and just say hey do you want to just go out for a drive somewhere nowhere specific it's not like do you want to go here it's literally just like do you want to go for a drive around and then they always just say, oh yeah, definitely. And then that's it. You know, you just go out and... Uh... Oh, I didn't know there was going to be a barrier. Move, move, move. Oh, Jesus. There was, I swear there wasn't a barrier there before. And a speeding offence. That's why everyone slows down so much. Right, I think I've got the toll down now. I think I know what's up. We're good. So I, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm going to slow down next time. Because especially considering I now know that there is a barrier there. Uh, yeah, so back to that insurance thing. Um, yeah, that, well, that's pretty much it, you know. Like, I just, I go out with my friends a lot. And we just stay out, just driving around until, you know, past 9, 10. And I guess that was also part of it, really. But now that I know not to go out past 10, I won't, basically. I'll... Make sure that I'm back. And it's actually the other night. I literally was racing back home almost. Well, not racing because I got a black box. So I can't go above the speed limit. But I was literally like trying to get back home as fast as I could. Uh, because I was dropping off a friend back. Because uh, she wanted a lift. Um, she wanted to lift from town back home. So I was dropping her back. She did pay me, by the way. Uh, to her house. And... It was literally like I suddenly looked at the clock and realised, oh my god, I've got to be back at 10. And then, because this was the first night that I had to be back at 10. Well, like, that I realised that I had to be back at 10. Um, and, yeah, so I was literally just racing back. And then I literally opened that front door to my house at 10 on the dot. So, it's, it's <laughs> to be honest, it was sort of like, uh, like in those programmes where you see those people who have been, like, tagged and stuff on their feet. Like by the police on like around their ankles, and they like got to be back by a certain curfew. Like it's, it just reminded me of that. Like it is weird. I mean, I don't have to be in my house by ten, obviously. I don't have to be anywhere by ten. It's just as long as my car is parked at my driveway by ten, then it's fine. You know, like I'm still allowed out. Don't worry, guys. I'm still allowed out after ten. Uh, it just reminded me of that because I was literally racing back and then I parked my car in my driveway at like one minute to ten. Um, yeah, so it's quite weird, but I've got two months of that, so it's going to be great, basically. It's going to be some good fun. I suppose they can slow down the speed limit there. Jeez. It's still a 56 road, which all these cars do not obey. So, yeah, that's the situation with my insurance. So, no more driving past 10, and no more going around other people's houses overnight, which, again, 
so lost to why they think I've done that. But, oh, here we go. Say so, that there's a sign. It's gone from a 90 to a 70. That makes sense, to be fair. You know what? Let's go to one of these. Because we haven't been to one of these in a while. A total of 44 paid. I swear it's 27 in those other lanes. Oh, they've mugged me right off there, haven't they? They really have. They have mugged me off. Right, that's another tip that I need to remember to go into the, like, automated lanes where you don't have to actually stop. Because they're cheaper. Which is good to know. And what are we even transporting? I usually show you guys. Uh, dry milk. 19 tons of dry milk in there. Who even wants dry milk? Oh, are we going off here? Yes, we are. It's a good job I looked. Mate, you're meant to go into the slip lane as soon as you can, not just go, oh yeah, I'm going now. Jeez. And we're going right at the end here. If you will stop. There we go. I need to practice my braking as well. Sorry, mate, you're going to have to wait. Right, there we go, Mets. Or oh, Mez. I'm, I'm assuming it's Mets, but again, I'm not French. <laughs> you know, I, I've never even learnt French in my life. I learnt German at school, so... If you are French, or if you just happen to know how to pronounce it, because you've been there or whatever, or you just know, please let me know in the comments, because that would be interesting. A doctor lying at the side of this road, this is weird. I mean, I have been to France a few times, quite a few times, I don't know how many, but... A few times, but I'm pretty sure I have, it was Paris twice, maybe once in fact, and then I've drove through France a couple times, maybe, or maybe once. I've definitely been to France at least twice, maybe three, maybe four times. I really can't remember because um, I know I went to Disneyland in France as well, but I don't know if that was the same time that I went to Paris. I don't even know if they're near, near each other. Assuming they are. But, I don't know. I've been at least twice. I know that. But that's why I was saying I couldn't remember. Not because I've been like 20 times or something, but because I genuinely just cannot think of how many times I've been there. Because uh, I know, like I said, I've been to France and I went, uh, sorry, to Paris and I went up the Eif Eiffel Tower. And then I know that I went another time in 2014 where we literally just pretty much drove through France uh, when we went on a Europe tour and went to like 13 countries in two weeks um, in a car. So, I mean, some of them we didn't even go for half a day. Like, uh, I think it was Liechtenstein. We, um, we, get, we literally just went in for a few hours, I think. Luxembourg, we stayed at night. And we went as far east as like Slovakia and Slovenia. Sorry, dude, you're gonna have to wait. Oh, I thought they were coming around here. Uh, yeah, so let me know, basically, because I learned German, which is more unusual than French, but not really nowadays. Like before, like back in the past, people just used to learn French in uh, in the UK. Or like some people just learn German, but now it's literally they split it half and half for almost every school. Like half the students in a school will learn German, half of them will learn French. And then if you're good at either of the languages, like if you get a good grade in Fr French or good grade in German after a couple of years, then you're allowed to uh, learn both languages. No way. Oh, are you joking? I was pressing the right key instead of the down key, but it still hasn't charged me, which is interesting. <laughs> Can you just go through uh, traffic lights really slowly and they just don't find you? That's good to know. Let's try it here, unless they turn green. Let's just try it. Just go through really slowly. No way. Oh, I don't know if they turn green, though, because that guy just came through. But if that if that's a thing, like no way. <laughs> that is weird. Right. Oh, a little bit more. There we go. All right, as usual, we're going to try this. 
This will be interesting because it seems to be backed against a wall over there. But we're going to have a go. Why would you want it here in the corner? Like, surely you want it against some of those doors. Oh, this is alright. Like, surely you want it against those doors like those other two trucks. Alright, easy does it. Easy. No? What? There we go, right. Key couple. Oh, jeez. There we go, right. Excellent. Oh, look at that beautiful amount of money. Seven and a half grand. Are we out? Yes, we're out of there. We're at level three. We're still a newbie, but we're on level four now, so that's good. Uh, right, let's skick this on somewhere. Um, should we skick it on fuel? Yeah, save some money on that fuel. I mean, long distance, I definitely would say, is the best for getting money. But, you know, I'm, I don't really want to film that many long distance episodes right now. So, I'm going to keep that down and um, plug it on these things. So, let's go for eco driving so we can save our fuel money. Uh, right, let's just go back into free roam driving. And... Start off. Right, so there you go. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Press that button down below and make that thumbs up turn uh, blue. Uh, and then if you have enjoyed this video as well uh, and you'd like to see more Euro Truck videos, American Truck videos, and any other gaming video, uh, loads of different games on this channel, then please subscribe by pressing the red button below. Uh, so yeah, like I said, that is it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. See you guys.